What is going on my broskies? My name is Totski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So on the Japanese version of the game, there was currently uh, information. I think it might have been a data download. I'm not 100% sure on what happened. I assume it was a data download, but we have a whole bunch of new characters getting their additional limit breaks or the limit break pluses. I don't even know what they're officially called at this point, um, but there are a bunch of Sugo Fest exclusive characters on this list that get upgraded captain abilities, which is what we have been asking for. And I literally do not understand why in the previous batches when they were giving these out to characters, why certain units did not even get buffed captain abilities. This time around though, a lot of the legends are getting buffed captain abilities. It's literally every legend that's listed except for one, um, which is kind of understandable why, because it's more of a recent style legend, I, I say. But uh, anyways, let's get into it. So a big shout out to Atsu for posting this onto the One Piece Treasure Cruise subreddit. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. First character is version 1 Mihawk. So obviously this is relating to his super evolution. The pre-super evolved unit does get a buffed captain ability as well, but it obviously will be a lot less than the super evolved version. But uh, for those of you who don't remember what this character does, he gives you a varying factor between 1.5 and 3.5 times based on your attack timing. So if you hit a perfect, the next slasher character gets a 3.5 boost. So what they're doing here is he gets a captain change of up to 3.75. So I assume this goes up to 1.75 as well for the low end. And then the middle would be 2.75, I would, I would say. But you also get an increased chance of matching slots. So that's a pretty nice upgrade for an old style unit. Um, it still really won't make that much of a difference. I don't think too many people are going to be opting to use this character as a captain anyway but it is a nice upgrade for the unit which is good which is what they need to be doing these older style units they need to buff them in some way shape or form so that if a player ends up pulling this unit but doesn't have like what like one of the newer characters to run a slasher based team or whatever team that unit is based around then you can use some of these older characters and they are still pretty decent they have a pretty good attack multiply 3.75 is no joke still an increased chance of matching slots it's pretty decent he also gets four turns of cooldown reduction which is huge that's huge he goes down to 13 turns that is pretty massive that is huge uh also gets 200 additional attack so he goes all the way up to 1990 so 2190 after cotton candy attack is still a little bit on the low ish end there are still lots of characters nowadays that can surpass that but still great attack amazing getting the cooldown four turns is ridiculous and 3.75 in matching slot rate v1 mihawk gets a pretty good buff from this limit break increase. The next character is version 1 Luchi. So let's go ahead and scroll across. Dude, version 1 Luchi, I think as it stands, is probably one of the worst legends in the game. His captain ability is a 3.5 attack with a matching slot, 2.5 otherwise for powerhouse, and then zero recovery. You get no recovery, but the really big problem here is his special, because his special ability just does damage to one enemy and increases the chances of you getting matching slots for three turns. It's a pretty horrendous special. I mean, yeah, he does give you a pretty good chance to get matching slots, like there's no lie there, but just all in all this character is just bad like this character doesn't do anything um so he gets seven turns of cooldown reduction so he goes down to a five turn cooldown uh 300 attack so he goes up to 2080 so 2280 after cotton candy uh captain changes to 3.75 okay again pretty similar to mihawk 3.75 with a matching uh, orb and i assume that's 2.75 otherwise but still this is the big problem no recovery in today's day and age is pretty bad in One Piece Treasure Cruise. I mean, look, the unit did get a decent buff, but it's V1 Luchi. You need a lot of things to go right for him for him to be good, but V1 Luchi is pretty bad. The next one is Jinbei version 1. Now, Jinbei version 1 is uh, still pretty good to this day. Not really as a captain, but he has a really good special ability with utility and giving you some beneficial slots. He's been used quite often. He also reduces his own cooldown with his... Um, with his sailor ability which is pretty good but he's a three times captain 1.5 health and seven percent damage reduction just pretty decent overall like just starting things off i mean that is a little low but this part of the of the captain ability is really good so let's see what he gets buffed with captain ability is a 3.5 captain with 15 percent damage reduction yo okay <laughs> now we're talking jimbei got a nice buff 3.5 with 1.5 hp and 15% damage reduction. Dude, Jinbei with the glow up. That's awesome. Uh, he also gets minus two cooldown. Nine turns. Yo. Uh, 200 additional attack. So he goes up to 1884. So he definitely has very, very low attack because he is a very, very old legend. But man, his attack is quite low compared to the other legends that we've already talked about. 
but man, that captain ability is a very, very nice upgrade. Uh, all in all, like, just all positive, man. All positive. He gets 500 additional HP as well, which is quite big. So that's awesome. V1 Jinbei with the glow up. Uh, V1 Fuji Tora. So this character, unfortunately, does not even have a super evolution yet. Uh, I'm hoping that sometime he will get a super evolution. That's what we're all hoping for at this point. But uh, let's go ahead and break him down. For those of you who've forgotten about V1 Fujitora, he gives 1.5 health to Driven, 3 times attack with a matching orb to Driven, 1.5 otherwise, and tandem and recovery are beneficial to your Driven characters as well. So he has a changed captain to just 3.5 times attack. Okay, so that is... A nice difference there uh, that makes him a 3.5 with a matching slot I assume this goes to two times I hope it goes to two times without a matching slot but of course that's the big downfall of the character is the fact that you have to get a beneficial slot to get your big boost I would love it if they you know gave him a super evolution made him something like maybe 3.5 flat or if it was like 3.75 with a matching slot and like three times otherwise that would be a pretty nice upgrade to the character um nowadays there are a lot of characters with sailor abilities that can give you beneficial slots so that's not really a big deal um but no one's really using fujitora as a captain i mean his special ability definitely needs an upgrade as well because he does give you a health cut which is nice and then for three turns you get a health cut but it's just a special ability that's so niche and you really don't need it that often um but in kizuna in very certain kizuna modes he was also obviously really really nice to have he can't be blown away which is quite big also for the kizuna modes and stuff like that so i mean look he, he did get a pretty decent buff uh, he gets two turns of cooldown, so he goes down to 14 turns. That is a pretty good buff as well. But look, Fujitora, you're just really never going to see him used as a captain. As, as even Driven as well. The Driven class as a whole, it just needs some sort of buff. Um, the next character is Inu Adashi. So that's a, a little bit further on. Uh, Inu Adashi, that is definitely a little bit further on. Uh, where is he? There he is. Inu Adashi. So Inu Adashi is a 3x no, I, think, I thought it was a 3x. I think it's 3x after his super evolution. Um, yes, 3x. And then below 30%, he gives you a 1.5 chain boost. So what happens with Inu? Minus 4 cooldown. Uh, so 9 turn cooldown for his special is very, very nice. 200 additional attack. So he goes up to 1987. And that also gives him an extra boost with the, uh, the, the tap timing bonus as well. So that's very, very nice. Uh, and his captain ability, 3.25 times attack and strength slots are beneficial. Wow, what an upgrade. 3.25 attack. You still get the chain boost when you're below 30%. So the amount of damage he's dealing below 30% is crazy. And then strength orbs beneficial to your cerebral units as well. That is very powerful. Pretty, like, I'm pretty impressed. Like, this is this is really, really nice buffs to these units. Neko Mamushi as well. All right, Neko. So Neko with his Super Evolution. Um, a lot of people were complaining about his Super Evolution, the fact that he didn't really get that much of a buff. But at the time of his Super Evolution, there really wasn't much they really needed to change in order you know, to make him, like, usable, I think. Because, like, he's a 3.75 captain for Strikers which is still pretty decent, honestly. Um, but of course, you do need a type orb or a rainbow orb in order to get that boost. So let's go ahead and have a look. Neko gets minus one cooldown. So it goes down to nine turns, which is which is fair for what he does. Uh, he'll also go ahead and get 200 additional attack. So he goes down to, or up to, 1934. And Captain increases the rate of colored orbs and makes sight orbs beneficial. Okay, now we're talking. That is fantastic. Of course, as we said, 3.75, that doesn't really need to be changed. I think that's quite fair for a character as old as Neko. Um, but for the, the fact that they're now going to increase the chances of colored orbs means that it's reducing the amount of recovery in tandem slots that will appear which means that you're you have a much higher chance to get your 3.75 base attack and sight orbs beneficial is pretty big as well obviously more matching slots more damage just overall a really nice buff for neko mamashi legend frankie also got an upgrade with the limit break i was pretty surprised to see that frankie got an upgraded captain ability uh we just have to find where is Frankie? There he is. The big boy Frankie himself obviously does have a super evolution as well. So Frankie, um, what is he now currently? He's a 3.25 captain to those uh, classes, of course. 1.3 health, recovery in 10 and beneficial. Of course, and he does have his captain action. So Frankie gets minus two cooldown. So that goes down to a 13 turn cooldown. Pretty decent, pretty decent. Uh, 200 additional attack. So it goes up to 2020, 20. Yeah, 2,220 with Cotton Candy, which is very good. And Captain becomes a 
5 captain. That is pretty freaking awesome. Uh, so his base goes up to 3.5. That's huge, man. That's that's huge. Um, unfortunately, his captain action doesn't seem to change um, from what we're seeing from the limit break, which I think is fair because when you use his captain action, you do get a 4.25 times attack boost uh, and a 38% damage reduction. And of course, you're attacking with certain classes. You get you know, obviously those certain effects. Um, his captain in his captain action form like Frankie is still really powerful But yeah, his base form. I mean, honestly, I didn't think it really needed to be changed that much But look, I'll take any buff that any of these characters can get that is completely fair to me Now here is the final Sugo Fest exclusive character Luffy and Ace. They get minus two cooldown So let's pull up Luffy and Ace real quick just to have a look Luffy and Ace goes down to 12 turns That's fantastic for a character like Luffy and Ace. They get 200 additional attack going up to 2030 so even more attack than legend Frankie and 500 HP, 100 recovery, just stats across the board are just top tier stats. Um, and of course, they do not get any buffs to their captain ability, which I think is fair. Um, Luffy and Ace, like, I do think that out of any of the dual legends that are currently available, I think that Luffy and Ace deserve a super evolution just because we've got characters such as Sabo and Koala. I mean, even now with Luffy, Taro, and Zoro Juro. They're just way better free spirit captains than what Luffy and Ace are. Like, and just in every way, shape, and form. Um, so I would love to see Luffy and Ace get a super evolution sometime in the future. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, of course. But those are all the Sugo Fest exclusives that are getting their limit break. Um, there are some other regular rare recruits getting limit break as well. Um, but they are all cooldown and stats related. They don't get any buffs to their captain abilities. Also, Treasure Map Jack and Treasure Map Gear 4 also get upgrades to their limit break. And they both... Gear 4 and, and Jack get minus 3 cooldown. So I think for Treasure Map Jack, that is a fantastic character to select with your Treasure Map key to max his limit break even further. The minus 3 cooldown for Jack is very useful. I think that's like 100% worth doing. But as for these legends here, like honestly, like they all get buffed in some way. But it's a matter of, you know, which ones are the more useful ones, right? Uh, you're never using any of these guys as captains, really. I mean, Inu, maybe, if you don't have a good Cerebral Captain. Neko, maybe, if you don't have a good Striker Captain. Frankie is still a pretty solid captain to this day. So I'd say either of those three is a pretty solid choice. It really depends on what kind of characters you have in your character box. As I said, if you don't have any good Cerebral or Striker, or even just if you, if you just want to use Frankie, because Frankie is just really good for Rainbow teams in general, then that is not a terrible choice. But when you look at things on the other side as a sub, you've got Mihawk with minus four cooldown, which I think we had a look, what was it, 13, 12 or 13 turns for V1 Mihawk special is very strong. Um, and then you've got characters like Jinbei, who is another powerful sub that is used quite often uh, to remove five turns of rainbow and blue shield as well as giving you aoe damage as well as giving you matching slots to your fighter characters very powerful sub in the game minusing his cooldown by two is pretty useful um but the rest of the characters here obviously it's up to your discretion but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of just breaking down all these characters and their brand new limit breaks they seem pretty impressive and i'm just really upset with the fact that why didn't they give some of the older characters a buffed captain ability in the past such as log luffy that's the big one that we're going to keep coming back to why did log luffy get a buffed captain ability it's the biggest shaft in Treasure Cruise history for a Sugo Fest exclusive character, I feel. Um, but anyways, hopefully we get something in the future. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But other than that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.